and we'll come up here, but they need to be able to answer how Gandhi and Tolstoy would answer these questions around leadership, okay? There's a fundamental question that I think all leadership programs or students who are studying leadership look at. Are leaders born or made? We rely heavily on the fact that we think leaders are made. They may have some basic components of it, but it needs to be nurtured and developed. You come in with this notion of what leadership is, and then you realize that there's so many other components to it. And not only that, but there's so many different sides of you. They didn't talk about, um, do you want to be a great leader or anything like that? What they were asking was that, do you want to find out about yourself? And then, you know, try to put yourself into the community as a leader. What it does is it lets you decide who you are and how you're going to be a contributing member of society, how you're going to step up and take that leadership role in whatever you might. There's a real energy on Wednesday nights when most of our comprehensive leadership program courses are going on. And so just after dinner, you have this flow of students and you know, 120 of them going to different courses. The comprehensive leadership program at Gonzaga University is built on, on three key dimensions. Think of them as a three-legged stool. The first dimension, the first leg of the stool, is really about self-awareness. We're asking each student who comes in to do a, a deep dive into who they are. And from that place, we're going to start and try to shape them into the leader that they can be, or maybe there are already a few steps down that journey, but get them to think critically about what that looks like. The first course, Profiles on Leadership, gets students to begin thinking about themselves in comparison to other leaders. Where is Plato? Plato, we have Plato, okay. Yeah. Aristotle? We're trying to get a sense of how would they inform um, what leadership is. How did this particular thinker um, actually talk, write, think, even do leadership? It really tries to get you to figure out who you are and what you want because you can't lead other people if you don't know who you are. Uh, and as the semester rolls on, they begin to look at their own values, beliefs, and really what they want for themselves as leaders. Together to create the war. We're unconscious. Dimension two looks at leadership in the form of relationship. Our students are taught that it's not always the, that one person who we designate the leader who has the power to change organizations. I think it all comes down to a matter of influence and not just influencing the followers, but the followers also influencing the leaders. It's a complete discussion. I mean, we have our professor there to lead us, um, to keep us on track, but whatever we want to talk about, whatever we have um, to bring to the table, and whatever personal experiences that we can share, we feel comfortable enough to do that with each other. And they bring their own experiences, their own opinions, and that's something I really value. Everybody is very accepting about others' opinions and things like that, and I love it. The final dimension is, uh, you know, leadership for the common good. So what does our Jesuit background, and how does that inform us in the way that we're going to be leaders in this world? And so it's giving students a chance to try that out through service, both um, here in Spokane or the Northwest or even internationally, like in places like Zambia. We're taking them way beyond simple leadership skills to sort of an international focus of servant leadership. This is our fourth year in Zambia, and uh, when it started, I was really looking for a uh, global intercultural experience for our students. Zambia, in a nutshell, is understanding that relationships are more important than your textbook and that until you get out with people and push yourself outside your comfort zone, you're never going to realize who you really are. And that doesn't necessarily have to be in Zambia, but in everyday life. We're able to enter into a community like Zambia that has so many different needs, but rather than just providing the answers for them, we're able to come alongside and develop real relationships. And so that's been a remarkable transformation for the students who've been involved. You hope to teach them something, but in reality, they're the ones that are teaching you how to you know, appreciate the little things and how to really um, value relationships. Most of the students, have a kind of a paradigm shift in their own lives. This is when they are having a kind of a global experience or realize that they are more privileged than others in this world. It just made it very real because there were other people experiencing those same things, struggling with the same issues we were struggling with. Leaders learn best from personal experiences and challenges, uh, turning points in their lives. There are the moments that help us become better leaders. This really shapes the way that you understand how you fit into the world and how you're going to interact with other people. I want to find who I am, what kind of quality I have, 
and then I want to affect the community um, with my own ability. And I think that that totally broadens your view of leadership and really helps to develop who you are as a person.